Hello and welcome to our first Southampton video, really, of the season. I talked about Lalana like ages ago, but it's about time. The season's about to start. We've got to do a season preview because there is quite a lot of talk about. We're going to be talking about predictions for the season. I'll do some basic predictions. I'm not going to go crazy because I don't know anything. We'll predict winner, top four, relegation free, and that's about it. And obviously, Southampton. We'll also talk about transfers because obviously there's still a couple weeks left and obviously there's still some more deals we want to do. We'll talk about who has come in, who may leave, who may come in and whatnot. And also at the end, we will do a preview for Newcastle because I don't really want to do a separate video the next day about Newcastle. Might as well get it all done now and talk about everything. So let's get into it. Now, if you are on Twitter Everyone is unhappy, um, which is typically always the case. The transfer window has been well and truly good and bad, I would say. Um, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Uh, in terms of who we've signed, I think there's been no bad transfer so far. Obviously, we've signed Harwood and Downs on permanence. Fantastic. Those were key players last season. Ben Brereton Diaz looks very good. I've only watched one game of him in the friendly against Lazio. We're all popped off. Bloody brawls and whatnot. He was very good. I think he's a he's exactly the type of player we need up front. Um, whether he plays through the middle, whether he plays out on the wing is yet to be seen. Obviously, I think that would really majorly depend on if we sign another player up front, which we definitely have to. Sugawara looks bloody good. We'll see how he goes in the Premier League. Nathan Wood, a little bit dodgy, but for the most part, for a couple mil, decent signing. Ronnie Edwards looks very good for, a, obviously, a cheap signing as well. And, and Young, same as Nathan Wood. Charlie Taylor looks composed on the ball. I think he's a better option than Manning at left back for sure. Adam Lalana, I haven't seen one minute of him. I don't even think he's played one minute of preseason. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. Obviously, it doesn't really matter. He was sort of a free transfer, just another squad player, hopefully, to give us maybe five, ten appearances and maybe a goal or two would be nice. And then in terms of, obviously, we've signed Juan Wellington, this Japanese guy, and other Japanese guy, but they're sort of not at the club right now. Obviously, some going to the Turkish club that we are affiliated with, some are coming next season or whatever it is. Now, obviously, there's been a few outgoings, Lianko, Perot, Keltakar, Bella Kotchat, potentially. I've seen that he may be going to Hoffenheim, off, off memory, purely off memory, that one. And obviously, Paul, Big Paul may be leaving as well, and we need the money, really. I mean, let's just get into it with the transfers, because obviously, there's a lot of unhappy things. The signs we've made so far, good, in my opinion. I think we really we really made our defense better, which is always good when you're getting promoted. We we'll obviously signed key players like Downs, Harwood, and then Brereton is a big signing up front. There is key areas we lack, and we all know what that is. Uh, there's a few positions that I would definitely want to see through the door before the end of the transfer window. I would have preferred it before the start of the season, but you can't always win. And those positions are obviously goalkeeper. For me, a sort of an 8 slash 10, someone who can play both roles, Matt O'Reilly, because um, I don't think Alcaraz is going to be that player. Obviously, if, we, if we're playing us, if we're changing our system slightly to accommodate him to be more up front and more as a number 10, purely as a number 10, then it could work. But when it comes to Alcaraz's reliability in our own half, it is very low. And then, obviously, a striker. Obviously, because we've been asking for that for a very long time. Ross Stewart, again, has not played a minute of preseason. Who knows if he's going to play minutes this season? Adam Armstrong, no, we don't want him through the middle. Put him out wide. He was great there. Brereton could play there, could play wing. I think it really, as I said before, depends on who we sign, and hopefully we sign another striker, and then maybe a front three of Adam Armstrong, Brereton, and then another number nine who's good. Pretty decent attack. Because we do really lack wingers. Adozi, Suleiman Adozi, I've been very disappointed with his preseason performances. He's been very awful in front of goal. Suleiman Suleiman does nothing. We've obviously got the two youngsters, Omoomeo and Dibbling, who are good, but they are still very inexperienced, especially in the Premier League. So those are really the positions we need desperately, and uh, it's it's de it's desperately, and, and goalkeeper, Christ, please. <laughs> Anyone, I'll take anyone. Put big Paul in there, he's a big lad. Chuck him in. Jesus Christ, we need a keeper. But in terms of people obviously upset that we haven't spent as much as they were thinking, we're not, oh, just why aren't we paying this amount for our Matt O'Reilly, just get him in and all this sort of thing. Like, you do have to realize that we are newly promoted. We are under FFP restrictions. We had to sell a lot last season and people be like, oh, well, there was so much money last season, but either we were overpaying in the championship. Like, we weren't running on a net positive because of all that, all that money. Like we were still, it's the championship. You don't get anywhere near as much money as the Premier League. And I don't know the details around sort of the uh, parachute payments and the promotion payments and all that. But I doubt it's like you get promoted and they're like, here's 100 mil. 
Spend it as much as you like, mate. I don't think that's how it works. Maybe it does. I could be wrong. But in reality, we need to sell to also buy. We've not sold anyone really for anything substantial. Obviously, we've sold like the anchor for a couple, bro for a couple and whatnot. But no one like potentially Bella Kotchap's going to leave for for 13, 15 mil, which is basically a new player to sign, just purely off that money itself. And also Big Paul may be leaving, some more money coming to the club. I know Alcaraz has got some rumors. I wouldn't be against selling him, but obviously you have to replace him. And that would be sort of like, if you were to sell Alcaraz or loan him out with an option to buy, whatever the case would be, you just get O'Reilly just straight away. You just pay whatever amount. Because I think Alcaraz could do a good job for us, but obviously I would prefer someone else to be in that third midfielder role. Obviously a Rebo would probably play there. Smallbone's not going to play there. We do need strengthening in that area. Alcaraz, as I've said, is just not reliable, especially when we want the ball to probably be patient. Alcaraz is very risky with his passes, so obviously that that's what that's what makes him good in the final third, but the problem is he, he can't be making super risky passes in our third because we'll just concede, especially with McCarthy and goal. No offense to McCarthy, but he should have just left on a three. He really should have. But I would expect that we'll get a striker in or an attacker in. I would expect that we'd get a midfielder and keeper. I'm not sure about because obviously the Bazunu, it's like, well, Bazunu's our number one. He's injured for the season. So a loan is the best. But then it's like, I've heard that we're not going to be able to pay Ramsdale's loan. Arsenal may not want to loan him out. So who can we loan and who's good? I know Sam Johnston's available. But it's like, well, if you sign Sam Johnston, does that mean Bazunu's not number one? Yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward situation. A loan is perfect. Ramsdale would be perfect on loan. But obviously wages and expenses are a bit different. But but yeah, in terms of transfers, I expect a few more to come through the door. But if but if it is worst case scenario, we don't sign anyone else, which would be very unrealistic. I mean, surely we'd sign some players. We're cooked. <laughs> Simple as that. We're done. <laughs> Got no chance staying up with this team. And we'll talk about predictions now. We'll just jump straight into it. I'm going to predict the bottom three first and then like the top four. Honestly, obviously, I'm no expert. I uh, didn't watch much of the Premier League last season because Southampton obviously weren't in there. So my ball knowledge has probably decreased a little bit in the Premier but that's why I'm not doing a full table because I ain't got a clue. So we're just going to do the obvious ones and then relegation. So we'll just do the top quickly. First place, City. Boring. Yeah, piss off. Top four, obviously, will be Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham. I do, United have been playing well, but it's United, so I don't really trust it at all. But I think Tottenham will improve again. But that, there you go, done, simple. Relegation, now this is a talking point. Now obviously Leicester, Southampton, Ipswich are the three promoted teams this season. Last place I'm putting Ipswich because they did a double promotion, which is fantastic, but the leap from the championship to the Premier League is huge, and I think they may struggle with it. Um, what they've done is fantastic, but I do think they'll struggle with that jump. Obviously, we've been recently Premier League, so it's a little bit easier for us to adapt and adjust. Maybe they'll do insane, I don't know, but I think Ipswich will get last. Southampton 19th with what, with what we've got right now. Keeper's dodgy. I mean, McCarthy's not known to make a lot of saves. He's not going to keep us in games. He's not going to do Fraser Forster performances. And then playing out from the back, an utter liability. Utter liability. This guy is awful. I don't think... I've watched three preseason games. I think in every single one, he's probably nearly gifted two goals to the opposition. And in the Premier League, in a competitive game, not a preseason friendly, those are goals. And we're just going to get dicked. As if we didn't have problems defensively already. <laughs> we don't need a keeper who gives them goals. And then I'd put Leicester 18th. Because the, the problem with Leicester is that I don't know what's happening with their deduction. So it's like, I would put them probably last if they had a deduction. But then it's like, well, are they going to have one or not? Is it going to come mid-season? Because I feel like it's a bit unfair for teams to have deductions done mid-season. It, it should be a before-season thing because it's sort of dumb. Like we saw it last year, Everton... Negative 10. Ah, oh, it's actually negative 6. Now it's negative 8. Nottingham Forest. Is it or is it not? You know, it's just stupid. I feel like it should be, these are your deductions. Like, at, maybe at the end of the season, go, next season you have the deduction of this. You have, like, two months to sort of counter it and lower it or whatever. Then by the time the season starts, it's this is your thing. There's non-negotiable. It's done. It would be a lot easier because then Leicester would go into it knowing you know, whether it's 5 points, 6 points, 10 points, or whatever it is. But then it's like, you, they could be safe by like 10 points. It's like, see ya, 15 point deduction, you're last now. It's like, okay, brilliant. So that would be my bottom three. I don't think, I think for Leicester, if they weren't to have a deduction, I think they have a good chance of staying up. I don't think Ipswich has a chance, and I honestly don't think we have a chance at the current stand. I think Southampton, I mean, we'll go into like our best lineup very soon, but we just don't have the quality to to challenge for, for survival, in my opinion, for right this second. Right this second with this team right now, I don't think we do. 
So we'll quickly run through probably the main starting 11. I'm going to assume that Russell Martin's going to play a 5-3-2 like he sort of did at the end of the season because defensively we were a lot better with that system because obviously it's more defensive in that regard. And I think we're not going to be able to have 75% possession in any of these games this season. So I think I'm just going to build a team with that in mind. Um, so obviously McCarthy and goal because we have no other options. Um, back five or back three, depending, will be Suguara on the right. We'll have Bednarak, Harwood. I'd assume Stevens would start. Um, personally for me, potentially Edwards would start there. From what I've seen, he's looked very good, but obviously it could be a little bit of, you know, he's got to get slowly drifted into the Premier League football, which is fine. But I think because Stevens is captain, he's a guarantee to start. I think Benrack and Harwood were brilliant last year, so they're obviously going to start, so they'll be our back three. Walker Peters on the left, if he stays, hopefully he does. Walker Peters on the left. Free in midfield would be probably the same as last year. Down, Smallbone, Aribo. But I've heard that Alcaraz may start, so it may be Alcaraz for that Aribo role. And then up front, Adam Armstrong, Brereton Diaz. I would assume that would be our sort of team for this season because I just don't think we have the attacking quality to sort of outweigh the poor defense we have, if you know what I mean. Like, if we were to play a four, our offense isn't lethal enough and isn't scary enough for opposition to to sort of maybe not press us as hard or do anything like that. I think they'll go, their attack's pretty fucking average at best, that they'll press a lot harder. And I think, obviously, we played well out of the back last season, the championship, but the championship's the championship, the Premier League's the Premier League. The Premier League's a much bigger step up, and I think we'll get caught out a, a lot more, a lot more. And it's not just we may lose the ball in our, in our defensive third, it's more that we would concede more from losing the ball because in the championship, there was a lot of times you're on transitions or when we lose the ball in our sort of defensive third, they just sucked and they just waste it. The Premier League's not going to be like that. If we're playing Liverpool or City or Arsenal and we lose the ball in defensive third and we have Saka, we have Diaz, we have Salah, we have Haaland, De Bruyne running at us, we're fucked. <laughs> I'm just going to say it how it is. Would be absolutely done. So I think that is our... That is sort of why I'm drifting towards the three because it would give us the defensive cover. Yes, attacking-wise, we wouldn't be as front-footed. But at the end of the day, we just don't have the attacking quality because if you play a 4-3-3 and it's just these players we have right now, you're starting a Dozy, you're starting a Sulemana. I would love to see Dibbling and Amoamo involved in the team, but you can't start 18-year-olds in the Premier League for the first time and hope that they're the saviour that they're the reliability going forward. I mean, that is too much pressure. So that's why my prediction is Southampton to be relegated. As it stands, obviously, if we sign Men O'Reilly Ramsdale and some cracked number nine who scores 20 goals, we may stay up. But that's a little bit unrealistic, and that's a bit of fairyland for me. But let me know your thoughts about the transfers. Let me know your thoughts about the predictions where you think we'll finish as it stands. Obviously, signings will change the sort of outcome of that. But for right now, right this second, I think we've got no chance of staying up. And that's not me being negative. Like, I'm not going to be calling for Russell Martin's head because I don't think this is Russell Martin's fault in the slightest. It would be the fault of the board. It would be fault of the transfers, really. Um, and I wouldn't say, like, I'd be harping on about how bad they were. It's more just the fact that goalkeeper is a glaring issue. It should have been done pretty quickly. McCarthy should have left and we should have signed a keeper. Striker should have been done very quickly. And then the other signings, it's like, okay, center back, full back, okay, cool. But those two positions were utterly crucial. We came into the season knowing Bazuna was not going to be playing basically any of the games this season. McCarthy's not good with his feet. We knew that for years. Striker-wise, we don't have one. And especially with Chay Adams leaving, we literally don't have one because we're not playing Siku Bar every game. And he is super Siku, but he's not that great. Um... Those two positions are crucial. And if we don't fix those two positions, uh, got no chance. Honestly, I'm just saying how it is. Got no chance. Even if we, you know, if we don't sign a keeper, we sign like a like a Matt O'Reilly type player or, or, or and a striker, we have a chance. But if we don't sign a goalkeeper or a striker, just in general, we're just done. So let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm just being a realist, not Mr. Negative. So if I see any comments telling me you're an armchair wanker <laughs> and that you're a negative bastard, Screw yourself. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Okay, moving on. Newcastle predictions. Okay. I've not done my research, but from what I would assume, it would be the exact lineup I just said to start, except for, I think, Alcaraz will start because I've seen I've seen rumors that Alcaraz is going to be playing. So I'll just believe Twitter for some reason because that's always a bad idea. Oh, a good idea, I should say. 
Always believe on Twitter. Anytime we're linked with a player, get crazy, watch the compilations, start tweeting out, oh my God, this guy's the GOAT, he will change our team, and then proceed to get upset when we never actually offered for him in the first place because we weren't actually wanting him in the first place. For me, when it comes to transfers, I never believe anything until Southampton say it, or maybe it's like confirmed by 20 sources. Then maybe I'll believe it. But it'll be that team, maybe Alcaraz would come in for a rebo, but it'll be probably that team that starts against Newcastle. And Newcastle aren't exactly the Newcastle from five, six years ago. Uh, they're, they're probably going to be challenging for the Champions League. No European football from last season, because obviously they finished like eighth or something, I think. So I think they'll be challenging for top four. And if they're challenging for top four, I mean... They're going to be a good bloody side. And Isaac's going to absolutely cook us. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. He is a naughty player. And I just think going into it, we just don't have a chance. Yeah. I mean, last time I played Newcastle, got battered. So. <laughs> I've got fond memories of Newcastle in, in our last Premier League season. But in terms of predictions, let me know your predictions, of course. I honestly don't think we'll score. I think 3-0. 3-0 loss is pretty a pretty fair prediction. Because at the end of the day... We've got no re reliable goalkeeper, we've got no reliable real outball unless Brereton Diaz plays there, but I don't know. I haven't seen enough of him. Obviously, I've only watched like 45 minutes of him preseason. I don't know how good he is and how well he can hold up the ball. Maybe he's excellent, which would be fantastic, but he may not be. And we may struggle to get out, especially if we play the three slash five, which will probably be a five against Newcastle because they're a good side. We're going to struggle to get out. We're going to try to play out. McCarthy's going to have howlers. And we're going to struggle to link the attack in midfield would be my guess for this game. And I think Newcastle will be clinical and they've got so much talent up front, especially off the bench as well. I don't think we stand a chance personally. And unfortunately, there's a 99% chance that I'm not going to be able to cover that game anyway. I'll do a review probably because I'll still watch the game. I just won't be able to stream it because family's up and bloody kids are around and bloody if I'm up at 3 I'm going, Rah, my coffee, my coffee. You know, you don't want kids waking up at 3 a.m. Okay, it's, it's not good. They'll just bloody cry the whole time. And then you can't get them back to sleep. And it's just like, you know? Anyway, so there's a good chance that won't happen, which is a shame, but I'll make sure to do a review. But let me know your predictions, what you think, whether I'm a tussa, whether I'm bloody spot on. But that's going to be it for this video. I think I covered basically everything I wanted to talk about. I'll do another sort of, once the transfer window ends, I'll do a transfer window video about sort of, you know, what I thought about um, our business this summer. I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10 for right now because I think it has been good, but it's just not enough to keep us up, in my opinion, at the moment, at the current moment. Hopefully, that will change, but that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did, and I'll see you boys in another video. Hopefully, we get off to a good start. A point would be fantastic, but I am not too optimistic for especially the first couple games of the season without some more signings into the club. And hopefully, I am the dumbest person alive, and we actually win the league. That would be fantastic. But I hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you boys later.